Well, hello and welcome to Grand Level's Wednesday Wisdom. Uh, I'm delighted today to be joined by Nigel uh, from sunny Mablethorpe, although maybe not quite so sunny uh, today. Um, but today we're going to talk about working with the homeless. Uh, and Nigel, why don't you kind of kick us off with just kind of introducing yourself and talking a little bit about how you first got involved in working with the homeless in your community? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Well, I'm Nigel. I pastor Hope House Church at Mablethorpe. It was previously Mablethorpe Christian Fellowship, and I've done that for about 30 years. Uh, and I guess I work with the homeless. I was thinking about this in preparation for today, actually, because it's sometimes good to just take a break and have a think about where we're at with things. And uh, I think for myself, uh, personally, I've always had a bit of a, um, uh, a burden, I guess, uh, a desire to work with people that are poor. Um, my own upbringing, we were very much loved as a family, but we weren't wealthy. And certainly when I was a younger child, we, uh, we were quite poor, really. Um, in fact, I remember doing a survey at school and uh, I was considered on the survey to be the poorest child in the class, which the teacher wasn't very happy with because he felt that I'd not been honest in my answers, but I had. Um, and uh, often poverty, I think, is hidden. Um, that was certainly the case with us. So we struggled a bit uh, being brought up uh, financially. We had a period when we were struggling. And... Um, and I think that gave me a burden to sort of work with people that are poor. And a lot of the work that we do here at Hope House is with people that are poor, marginalized within our community. Um, also, a word was given to me personally a number of years ago. My mother keeps reminding me of it, that I would have a ministry to men. And at the t it's something that stuck with me, but... Um, uh, I guess really the fulfillment of that is the work that we do with the homeless, which at the time I never thought it would be, but um, I think the fulfillment of that word has been our ministry to homeless men. So uh, as a church, really what happened was about 10 years ago, my sister-in-law, Lisa, uh, set up something that we still run here called Open House. And um, it's a cafe, uh, it's sort of cafe based, but really, our focus is not so much the cafe, it's to connect with people and to support people. And we knew there were a lot of people in things like bedsit land in Mablethorpe, just living in a single room. And we wanted to provide them with somewhere to come and meet. And uh, we run that today, we run that five days a week. Uh, so people can come in, they can get a meal, wow. they can get a drink, they can have a chat, get friendship, support, use the internet. But as we started to develop that work, um, the council at the time started to send people that were going into the local council offices and saying that they needed help with homelessness. They started sending them to our open house to get a meal. And um, I think we, we started to see one or two homeless people coming to us. we a seaside resort, Mablethorpe. So we had that sort of traditional homelessness in the summer but we started to see homelessness appearing in the winter. And so alongside our open house, we sort of invested in things like a washing machine, dryer, so people could wash their clothes. We started supplying things like tents and sleeping bags. And I guess if you set your stall out to meet a particular need, God will honour that. Mm. And uh, we started to see more homeless people coming to us. Mm. So that's really how we got started. I can move on and share a little bit of how we expanded it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It'd be great to hear kind of how that's developed and, and what it looks like now as well. So I think the next step was we were supporting these guys with meals and perhaps giving them internet connection and washing their clothes and providing them with clothing and tents and sleeping bags. But I guess everybody's desire with the homeless is to see a roof over their head. And so... Um, we did a, a fundraiser, we did a, a rough sleep, a few of us, and myself, I was included in that. We slept out just one night, and actually that was quite an experience just to mm. realise the sort of anxiety and the challenge that people face just sleeping on the streets. Uh, that raised some money, and we used that money initially to um, try and provide deposits for guys here, uh, with flats. and. Um, we had a, 
well, a, an amazing incident, really. My, my sister-in-law was, she had a guy come to her and he, he said, you know, I need somewhere to live. And she decided to pray, sat in our reception, pray that God would provide somewhere to go. And as she arrived from her prayer, she looked out the door to see a guy over the road putting a notice in his window. And so she went out to see what it was and he was putting up a notice to say he had a flat available. And so she spoke to him and basically within minutes of praying this prayer, she was able to provide this guy with uh, accommodation because the landlord agreed to take him. Amazing. It was amazing, but actually over the six months or so that that guy was in there, it didn't go the way that we hoped it would, but it taught us a big lesson because what happened was <clears throat> the guy failed in his tenancy, trashed the place, no. didn't, didn't pay the rent. And so this guy, this landlord, who out of the kindness of his heart had provided this place to this homeless guy, was not very happy. Mm. And uh, we had a chat with him and I always believe that God will turn something bad for good if we really will commit ourselves to him. And so we said, well, look, we really appreciate what you've done for this guy. And we're really sad that it's not worked out for you or for him. But how about if we just come in and sort the flat out so as you can hand it on to whoever you want to hand it on to next? And we just put some guys into there. We cleaned it. We tidied it. We did a bit of damage repairs. Mm -hmm and handed it back to him. And he was just absolutely delighted. And then, then he came to us and he said, you know, I, I really want to help you guys with this homeless work. You know, what can we do? And so we had a conversation with this guy, not a Christian. And, uh, and we said to him, well, you know, it clearly doesn't work to just put a roof over people's heads. We need to be able to do more. And so he said to us, well, what if I buy a house and you manage it? And you put the guys in and you manage it and you just pay me a rent for the property and then you can, you know, you can run that how you want. And that basically is how we started our first property. He went away. He was gone for quite a while, actually, quite a few months. And I didn't, I began to think it wasn't a serious offer. And then all of a sudden he came in one day and he said, I bought a house. He didn't, he didn't have any discussion with us. He said, I bought a house. You can come and have a look at it. And if you want it, you can have first refusal on it. Wow. And uh, so we went and looked at it. We still operate that house. And uh, that was how we got into our first property. We, we leased from, we went entered into a commercial agreement with him and uh, we leased that property and that's a four bed unit. And we provide support and living in that, in that property. <coughs> the, um, and that just, was so much better for us because it gave us time with guys. It gave us time to work with them. Uh, and we very quickly, well, we, I think we'd realized by then that homelessness was more than just putting a roof over people's heads. Yeah. But um, as we've developed and provided support to guys in the, that accommodation and, and the one that we run here at Hope House now, we found that, you know, homelessness is, once a person is homeless, it's, it's more complex than people realize. There are reasons behind that homelessness that have caused it, which guys often need support with to find their way out of. And so uh, that's how we got started. Uh, the guy just, it, well, I, I think it was an amazing God incident that we yeah. had this property made available to us. And so we were able to enter into it really without putting very much money into it at all. Yeah. Um, and his property was made available. Initially, we ran it with volunteers. We did find some funding to employ a manager who ran that house. And then we expanded the work because here at Hope House, we have accommodation um, on two upper floors. The, the front part of Hope House used to be a guest house mm. many, many years ago. And... Um, but because of flood risk issues in Mablethorpe, with it being a seaside resort, we could only use it for holiday accommodation because they wouldn't allow it to be used all year round. Okay. And um, we got into a conversation with a local councillor who said, well, you've got accommodation at Opas. Why are you not using your own accommodation? So we said, well, it's your rules that are meaning that we can't because we can't use it all year round. And uh, she assisted us 
in making a change of use for the property that we have here. Mm. Uh, we converted that from a holiday accommodation into a, a second four bed unit. Mm. So um, today, if, fast forward into today, we have a four bed unit here at Hope House and the one at Fitzwilliam Street, the, the one, that, the first property, we uh, do that as a three bed unit now. So we can accommodate up to seven men. Mm. So that's that's basically how we got into it and how it's how it's developed. Yeah, so it's developed loads, and it's great to hear you know how God's just aligned some of those things from your testimony of and the words over you about working with men um, to where you are now being able to provide this support. Sounds amazing. So I'm guessing many years of kind of working with the homeless, I'm guessing you've got a bit of experience of highs and lows and <laughs> ups and downs. Yeah. And well, so we still consider ourselves very new to it. And I think I think a lot of people who work in homelessness would still consider us new at it. So mm -hmm. we've only, I guess the first homeless guys that came to us were about 10 years ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, that was through the support of our open house. But we've been accommodating guys in, in our accommodation for about four years now mm. so we're still very new to it and we're still learning and I guess you learn lessons with every guy that you deal with uh, every guy is different every guy is unique um, and uh, you know you learn from the challenges you learn from the highs you learn from the lows but we're, we're still we, we still consider ourselves very new at it <laughs> but uh, uh, I think also the fact that uh, one of the things I didn't mention is that we started to see an increase, particularly in men who were homeless during the winter. So as a, as a seaside resort, we were, I guess we've always had people who come down and are homeless during the summer. And, you know, we were used to dealing with those sort of people because um, that's what happens at seaside resorts is this, bizarre thing where people head back to the place that they were happy as a child and um, you, you think it wasn't true but I've, I've talked to many many homeless people who have said and we've said well why are you in Mablethorpe I said well I've had these problems where I live and so I, I thought I'd come to Mablethorpe why did you come to Mablethorpe well I was always happy here when we came on holiday mm. you think you find it difficult to believe that people would revert to that but they do yeah. so we'd always had the traditional summertime homeless but we'd start to see an increase in men being homeless during the winter and that is brutal that is hard you mm. know sleeping rough in a cold english winter is really challenging and it knocks it out of people and we were seeing an increase in that so i to some extent god answered really what was becoming a burden to us because i always take the view that if the problem is on your doorstep god's put it there for mm. a reason and we were coming into church, you know, midweek and finding that homeless guys were just sat there waiting for us. Wow. And even during the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So what would you say have been some of the highs and lows then? What have the, any well, the high is always, <laughs> the high is always to see somebody who is genuinely street homeless. And, you know, nearly all of them, when they come to us homeless, they are, They've got nothing material. They're literally often just stood in the clothes that they're stood in, but they've lost hope. Mm. So many of them. You know, I've interviewed a guy today, and the main thing that stands out to me is, at the moment, is lost hope. Yeah. And uh, and to see them go from that to see their hope restored, see that they've got a future, plan for that, and come out the other side of it where they're confident to live independently again. Yeah. However that is, you know, we've had some guys that will never work again because of what they're living through. Mm. But but they've reached a point where they can live independently again and they've got some pride back in their life. Some of them have gone back in, they've got a, a job and that the job has been their springboard into living independently again. Um, that is always the ultimate, you know, to see a guy go from no hope and to see him be able to live independently again. If in that journey, we can see him come to Christ, that is a great bonus as well. And we've had some that have committed their lives to Christ in that process as well, which is always wonderful. That is always the high. Mm -hmm. The low is that the majority do not achieve that. 
Yeah. Um, so we're, we have some fairly strict rules in the way that we run our house, our houses, because we want to we want to ensure a safe and pleasant atmosphere for the guys that live there. Uh, but that needs discipline on their behalf. And so uh, fair few guys fail. They can't live with the rules. They can't, um, they decide to leave or we have to ask them to leave. And that's always frustrating because our intention is not to have to make a guy homeless again or move them onto somewhere else. We wanna, we wanna provide a route for them to live successfully and independently by themselves. And uh, I guess the majority have, you know, we only help them to some extent. And that isn't really what we want, but homelessness is a very challenging area. You know, I think in all the things I've done in 30 years in ministry, working with the homeless has been far and away the most challenging. Mm. Uh, it's stretched and challenged my faith on a level that nothing else has. Yeah. Um, but equally, when you get a good result with it, it is, far, you know, just incredibly satisfying as well. Um, so yeah, it is a it is an extreme mix of emotions doing this work. Um, uh, and I say we came to it with really no experience of it. It wasn't like we were trained in it or anything. We were just doing it because these guys were there and wanting help, and we've learned the hard way to some extent. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it has some great highs. It has some incredible lows. And I would say that for anybody that wanting to do homeless work, be aware that it's not always the most, well, it's very satisfying, but it, it's, it, it is hugely challenging as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, bless you guys. Well, well done for the successes. And I guess you've learned some perseverance for those, you know, through some of the challenges and, and difficulties. Learned, learned, learned some patience, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I love the way you guys are just taking that approach of, you know, you're tackling the problem on your doorstep, literally. And, uh, and that God is, you know, providing a way and a means for, for that to happen through these houses and, and the yeah. Well, I, we've done a, we've done a number of projects with with the poor. You know, I helped establish a furniture scheme, which actually operates next door to Furniture Church a few years ago now, and that has helped hundreds, probably in the thousands now, of mm -hmm. people with housing needs. Um. But, you know, some of the greatest ways I've ever seen God turn up is when you're working with the poor. Yeah. God has just provided abundantly um, for us to be able to do this work. We don't do it. We don't do it for money. Um, in fact, we don't get a great deal of money for doing the work. Yeah. But, um, but God always has provided for us. You know, I needed a room decorating last week and we just had a guy join the church here. And guess what? He's a professional decorator. Yeah. And he came in and decorated the room for us. And, you know, God has just blessed us time and again with so many things yeah. uh, that have enabled us to do the work. That's so good. Well, I'm sure there's maybe a few kind of people watching or churches watching that are wondering how to get started um, working with the homeless or what kind of is something that they can do um, mm -hmm. to work in this area. Have you got any kind of hints and tips for how to get going? Yeah, I guess so. Um, or well, even how not to get going. <laughs> well, certainly for us, certainly for us, I think sort of reflecting upon how we started and got involved in the work with the homeless. For us, it was something that was on our, it was starting to appear on our doorstep because the council was sending people to us. Now, actually, I would have to take a step back from that because a lot of people say to me, we don't have a homeless issue. And my answer to that will be, I'll almost guarantee you have, but you just don't know of it. Yeah. So if you want to get involved, in homelessness, I would say take some steps towards it, but don't rush at it. Um, so <clears throat> starting point could be to just find out what is the homeless situation in your area, who is working with the homeless, and connect with them and see what you can do to support them. Yeah. But in my experience, the more you do this stuff, the more you put out, you know, put out feelers, the more you will get connected to it, the more god will bring to you mm. and certainly in our case as we took steps you know simply it was that we provided to them what we had but as we provided what we had we realized it wasn't going to be enough for their immediate needs 
Yeah. And so we started to up it. You know, we were providing them with a meal and then we moved on to things like a washer and a dryer and having a clothes rack. Now we've had uh, showers installed downstairs so that street homeless can get a shower. Or yeah. another thing that we're seeing in our area, and this is a massive growing area, is uh, van lifers. So mm -hmm. people that can't afford or don't want to live in traditional accommodation who are living in vans. Wow. So we're starting to get some van lifers coming, connecting into a, to our open house, and they're coming in to use the washing machine and they're coming in to use the uh, shower. And yeah. it's connecting us into this community. Yeah. And of course, in the seaside community, this is a big area that the van lifers connect into. They park up in the sun dunes or whatever, and they live there all year round. You know, I've had van lifers in last week using facilities here. Wow. Um, so it is another form of, you know, they, well, they would say they do have a home, but they don't have a traditional home. Um, so what I'm saying is that if you, if you put the feelers out, um, the chances are you will start to feel a burden for it if you've got any real heart for this stuff. Mm. That certainly was the case for us. But as you, as you start to meet needs, whatever level that is at, I'm sure you'll find, as we did, that God will open up more opportunities for you. Mm. But I would give it with a word of warning. It will transform your church if you're not already doing it. You'll become a different, you know, your whole atmosphere and the place will become different. Mm. because you are working with different types of people yeah yeah so um yeah i would say just explore if you're not presently involved explore and see whether that belief that there is no homelessness is actually true look at who's doing that work talk to them talk to your council's homeless team ask yeah. if there's anything that you can do um yeah. and uh if you if you start to get some connection with the homeless, for example, if they're coming in for meals, which a lot of churches run cafes and stuff like that, if they're coming in for meals, just look to see if there's more that you could do to support them. Yeah. Um, and I guess that kind of leads us on to our last kind of point of today, which is what kind of are some of the key things you can think about to prioritise a lasting change um, in this sort of community or kind of um in this need because like you've kind of almost established yourself some kind of engage and are completely transformed and and go on to live independent lives in their own homes and some sadly don't and kind of fall back into homelessness or kind of um are keen to go their own way what do you think are some of the, the kind of keys in in creating that lasting change in people's lives and what do you look for um mm -hmm. to see if people are are kind of pursuing that way forward mm. well undoubtedly as a christian organization i would say the greatest strength that we have is faith in christ and to bring people if we can bring a person to a to a personal faith in christ that will help in so many of what are the common areas for what can cause homelessness mm. so I would say that the most common thing that has to be broken in a guy is something that is uh, bizarrely I've not heard talked about a lot, but this is my opinion, having done this work and been involved with guys for a while, is an independent attitude. Um, you know, they look at rules or authority or whatever, and they just uh, do, do what I want. Mm. And, and teaching a person that actually you can't do that, life isn't like that. Whether you want it to be or not, life doesn't allow for you to just live your life the way you want. Yeah. We have to live by rules and we have to submit to authority. And of course, in Christ, we're submitted to Christ. And so we learn that lesson of submission. Um, so I would always say that faith would be the number one. You know, if you can bring a person to faith, they, it roots something in their lives, which will help them whatever they're battling with. And yeah. the, second, the second big area that we're dealing with is mental health. You know, virtually all the guys that we, we deal with who are homeless on some level are battling mental health issues. And if we can bring them to faith, it helps them have an anchor in their lives uh, when they feel like everything is spiraling out of control. Yeah. But uh, the, other, the other thing I think that, that faith does and churches are very good at is that so many of these guys have had broken relationships 
Mm. You hear it time and again when we interview these guys and they share their life story. And so often it started at a very young age. They've been brought up in broken families. You, they feel the pain of that. They've not managed to keep down relationships themselves. And they just feel like they're alone. They have no connection. They have no friendships that are lasting. And as church, we're able to model and show them something different. Yeah. And lo lots of them, even if they haven't come to faith, they've recognized that they're genuinely loved. Yeah. Um, and so to me, faith is, is the number one. But actually, the next thing I would say that brings lasting change in guys is, as a Christian, to keep loving them and to keep connecting to them. Mm. So I've had guys, I met a guy yesterday that I evicted a few weeks ago because he did some really bad stuff. Mm. But I've tried to keep friendship with him. And he contacted me just the other day and he said, you know, my shoes are worn out and somebody's got a pair of shoes, but they're 20 miles away. Can you bring them to me? And I just thought I'll do it just to keep connection with him. Yeah. Just to show him that actually, despite the fact I've had to ask him to leave, I'm still a friend to him. Yeah. And, um, and so I think to just stick with guys, regardless of what the outcome is when they're with us, to just be there as a friend, and I think not just myself, but all our staff and volunteers have always modeled that. They've been friends with people. Yeah. And I think it's um, that I haven't emphasized that a lot in this talk, but actually it's one of the things that we do. We have a team of volunteers who come in as well. So we have paid staff who work with the guys in the morning and then in the afternoon, we have volunteers who just come in to see them as friends. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the things that we've tried to model is just to build friendship with these guys. Um, and many of them are very, very appreciative of it. Mm. Um, so we've not tried to go, you know, we're professional at working with homeless. We just tried to say we're friends. Yeah. Um, so we have a team of, they're all ladies at the moment, actually, but a team of ladies are all come in in the afternoon and they just befriend the guys. Yeah. Um, and spend time with them. And some of them take them out for fish and chips and trips here and there and, um, but just just to be a friend, I think, brings a lasting change in people. Yeah. No, it's so good. So good. Well, loads of wisdom there, Nigel. Thank you so much for being with us, and thank you for sharing. My pleasure. Well, we really appreciate the opportunity to share it, actually, because I think, um, well, actually, lots and lots of churches are working in this area, um, and, and I think it's good to have an opportunity to just raise the profile of this type of work because there is lots of good work being done by churches connecting with the homeless, but there's lots of other organizations as well that are doing it. We've connected with some non-Christian charities that are doing great work actually, just supporting the homeless and it's good to work alongside them and support them in what they're doing as well. But yeah, thank you. It's, it's good to be able to raise the profile of it. Great stuff. Well, thank you, Nigel, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Jason.